What a dope dream team. It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with Al Max reinvented Schumacher Shoemaker's driving style. Is it Schumacher or Shoemaker? I don't know why I don't remember. He's one of the most legendary drivers in F1 history. But before we dive into this, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Ring notification bell. Get a video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. If you guys have a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon. Drop it in the comment section or in the description section is your premium request link. What do we got? Max Verstappen has a really distinctive driving style and it reminds me a lot of how Michael Schumacher drove. So much so that I've been comparing their onboards and it's been super interesting. Max Verstappen drives with a Schumacher style but one that's been adapted for the cars of now. So let me explain. Schumacher drove with a distinctive style. He actually liked quite a lot of the oversteer in his cars. Meaning he liked the balance of grip in favour of the front axle. So he would like the aero balance, the weight distribution and the rake of the car to all favour the front, giving him incredible front end grip through the corners. This meant he could rotate the car very quickly, pivoting it in the middle of the corner. But you don't get grip for free. If you want a very pointy nose of the car, that means there's less grip on the rear. And that's what we mean by an oversteer balance. Now, this can make the car very unstable. On I feel like, yeah, of course I'm, ne I'm never going to be an F1 driver. I think I prefer to understeer. I prefer understeer than oversteer. I think a lot of drivers prefer oversteer. But I feel like me personally, I would prefer understeer than oversteer. Well, I keep it going, keep it going. What we mean by an oversteer balance. Now, this can make the car very unstable on corner entry, where it can feel like the rear axle wants to overtake you on the way in. Schumacher could deal with this, and in fact, he used it to his advantage. He used the pointy front end and loose rear end to pivot the car in the middle of the turn. But That's how crazy. did he do this? Well, he changed his racing line to That's make this work, crazy. where many drivers were taking a wider line, sweeping through the corner to hold a high minimum speed. Schumacher did almost the opposite. Oh, he broke wow. very late, sending the car a little bit past the apex. Then he would use his unique style to pivot the car. And then, because he had the car turned way earlier than the other drivers, he could get on the throttle not only earlier, but harder as well. And in an era where the F1 cars were very stiff and with relatively unrefined suspension, this aggressive style really worked for Michael. The biggest hey. variation between myself and my teammates I've had has always been how fast you go into the corner. Let me explain a little bit more with some data. This is a telemetry trace from the hairpin at Montreal. The top graph oh, is Shumi wow. and the bottom is his teammate Barrichello. The red trace is the brake and the green is the throttle. As you can see, Schumacher brakes much later and yes. much harder, showing his incredible feel for the tyre's grip. Here, he must have been right on the limit of locking up. But despite braking later and gaining on entry, Michael could get the car turned and get back on the throttle earlier, carrying more speed in and out of the corner. And that... And that's, that's why Michael is who he is. That's why he's a special driver that he is. Uh, that, that ability to do that. And that's, that's... I feel like that's scary to most people. And even some of the drivers in F1 are like... To be able to do that is, is, is a scary thing, but uh, Michael mastered his craft. He mastered his craft. Back on the throttle earlier, carrying more speed in and out of the corner. And that is remarkable. I have this natural ability of knowing how fast I can go into this corner without going out too often. It's an instinct. But what's cool is that you can see it. Just look at this. Turn one at Hungaro Ring, Michael throws the car into the corner, pivoting the car and stamping on the throttle to fly back out again. Look at the steering wheel. He turns the car into the corner, then pauses on the steering. And this is when the rear of the car is sliding, just slipping exactly as Michael wants That's it to. Crazy. And as drivers, we call this rotation. But there is another thing. Michael was left foot braking where Rubens was right foot braking, meaning that Barrichello had to hop from the throttle to the brake with the same foot, whereas Michael could actually overlap the pedals. Just look here, when oh, wow. Michael is braking, he's still actually on the throttle slightly, which is normally a no-no, as you're not braking to your full potential. But it's thought that Michael was actually using this to balance the car front to rear, to limit the understeer or oversteer on entry. But how does all of this apply to Verstappen? Well, we'll get to that. To analyze a driving style, I look at a lot of onboards, Dang. along with a lot of data. It helps you build up a- Can we give a shout out to driving? 61 and shout out to this YouTube channel YouTube channel y'all go follow because uh, because my guy definitely does a lot of research to be able to make these videos and man 
That I find that absolutely awesome. I find it absolutely awesome, but keep it going. Driving style, I look at a lot of onboards, along with a lot of data. It helps you build up a picture of what the driver is doing and really understand their technique. And a lot like a load of other fields, you need to understand how to read data. And for a free and easy way to learn anything new with maths, computer science, and data science, you should go to brilliant.org, the sponsors of today's video. Oh, look at this, it's Brilliant's course on exploring data visually, teaching you how to had quite an extreme style that just won't work for Verstappen. Schumacher was flying into corners, braking extremely hard and heating up the tyres a lot, then pivoting the car and sliding the rear, then smacking 700 horsepower through the rear tyres and powering out of the corner. And he did this with incredible finesse, but it's still quite an aggressive way of driving a race car. But Verstappen has been driving in an era of F1 where the tyres are just too fragile for that. If he did this, the tyres wouldn't last a lap at full pace, let alone a race distance. So he's adapted his style. By the way, would you like the opportunity to drive an F1 car? Well, you can still yes. enter our competition to join me at That's Paul Ricard dope. with an all expenses paid trip to drive an F1 car. Just click the link in the description. So where Schumacher veed off a corner very harshly, pivoting the car, and Lewis Hamilton sweeps through a corner to maximize downforce, Max uses a style that is somewhere in between the two. Firstly, Max uses a very similar car setup to Michael, with a very pointy front end and a more loose rear end, but not quite as much as Schumacher. Then he uses a similar racing line, driving the car hard into the corner, but doesn't veer off the corner quite as much. But why is there this difference? Well, we mentioned the tyres earlier and they just won't deal with the sliding around. So Max just has to be more gentle with them. But there is another thing. The cars of today have much more downforce and it's downforce that comes from the floor of the car. So you get the most out of it when the car is stable and level with the circuit. So Max drives a version of the v off line, but with a more open racing line. This means he can still brake late and get on the throttle early, whilst making the most yeah, of the downforce he has and protecting the tires. There is one more crucial thing for this, and it's the reason that only a few drivers can nail this technique. And well, it comes down to something in both of these drivers. They both have an incredible natural feel for the limit of grip. With Schumacher, you could see that the car was dancing. It was always on the limit. Oh my just look God, at this yeah, I just watch it from his arm, boy. It, it look, kind of looks scary. Cause you feel like that car could just start spinning out at any second with his control of the car. Hey, that's truly phenomenal. That That's truly some special stuff. Schumacher, you could see that the car was dancing. It was always on oh the limit. Just God. look at this lap at Suzuka. He was correcting the car multiple times through each corner. When the steering wheel is dancing like that, you can tell the driver is that's right crazy. on the limit. And it's the same thing with Max, although you do see the steering wheel moving slightly less, as it's a newer car with more grip. But essentially, the same thing is happening. You can actually see it more clearly when he's driving in changeable conditions. And we saw at Zandvoort this year, he gained 12 seconds on his teammate in just two laps. And with this insanity. sort of driving style that they insanity. both share, you need this ability. Anyone else who hopped in their cars might really struggle with the instability at the rear. To another driver, it would feel like the car is trying to throw them off the track. But to them, it's a dance that they're comfortable with. But there is much That's more crazy. to Schumacher's driving style, and I made a whole video about it just here. Thank you very much for watching, and don't forget, you can still enter to win a drive in a Formula One car. Link That's below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. So I might have to hit that uh, link and try to win that, that drive in a Formula One car. But that's all we got. You guys got a favorite video suggestion. You can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. It's your boy, d -Neil. Out.